Hello, welcome to Moon Lore. And Jenny and I are here today to talk about the new moon, which occurs on November 15th. That was correct. And yeah. um, so, new moon, it's the beginning of a new cycle. This, I believe, is the first new moon after both uh, Mars and Mercury are now direct. So we've got some relief and some forward motion going on there. This mm -hmm. is a new moon in Scorpio. I think it's in the late degrees of Scorpio. So you're going to want to look to where Scorpio lands in your chart to give some consideration to what you want to start at the beginning of this process. Mm -hmm. um, I think what we want to talk about is a little bit of how the process works. The new moon starts, that's the starting point, that's where we plant the seed. And at the new moon, it is, uh, the new moon is because the moon is between us and the sun. So we look at the moon, we don't see anything because, um, because it's aligned with the sun. Mm -hmm. So that's the first step in an eight phases of the moon. Mm -hmm. So we think about the new moon starts the process. A week later is the first quarter moon. And that's when we have to take action on what begins at the new moon. The full moon is a week after that, which is where we see the illumination. A week after that, at the last quarter moon, we start releasing the process in order to come back to the next new moon a week after that, which is a month after this new moon. So that's the shorter cycle. There is the longer cycle. You wanna explain the longer cycle, Jenny? Well, the longer cycle just brings in the year long reference point here. So what we're gonna look at, this is the new moon in Scorpio. You would wanna to look to the full moon in Scorpio, um, it, which is gonna happen during Taurus season um, in April and uh, early May of 2021. Um, so those are just ways to look at, I just think it's helpful to keep the, the year long cycle in mind yeah. as well. The short term cycles are more like helpful for us individuals to see how time marches, marches forward. You can use it for projects and ways of moving your own personal growth forwards if you like. And uh, that can be really helpful. Um, I think the big thing to remember with this new moon is that we are in Scorpio season, meaning the sun is in Scorpio. Um, it's always at Scorpio this time of year. So it's always this darkest time of the year where we're seeing the light really weighing down towards the um, winter solstice in December. So we're really in that, that waning phase and we have just had Halloween. We just had All Saints Day and that whole designation around the veils being thin between the worlds at this time. Um, so this is a time of year where we are descending into the shadows and um, and we all just, you know, in terms of the season, we're hunkering down. Maybe you're thinking about what, you know, maybe you're starting to cook soups and stews and bringing yeah. in some more food for the winter, the root vegetables, things like that. Um, symbolically, using astrology with the new moon in Scorpio, um, conjoining that sun in Scorpio, we're thinking more about what are the things that are maybe tucked away in the shadows? What are the things we need to confront in ourselves? What are the darker areas that need some light shown? Um, and also recognizing how important those things are for catalyzing our own projects, for um, catalyzing our own transformation and dealing with ourselves as humans. <laughs> Just, it's not an easy task, and um, it, that's part of what the symbolism is about. Yeah. So, so yeah, fi find Scorpio in your chart and think about what Jenny just said and think about, you know, what is it in that area that's deep under, under the roots mm -hmm. that you can pull to the surface and start working with during this, this season. Yeah. It, it's such an interesting season every year. The Scorpio yeah. season is so interesting because we do, we have to go, go deep and in the Northern hemisphere, especially up here where we live, things, it's so dark. I mean, it's pitch black at 4.30 in the afternoon and, and yeah. Um, so yeah, making soups is a great, <laughs> a great way to use it. <laughs> I like what you just said though about the bringing it to the surface. What do you need to bring to the surface? Because one of the things I like to think about with Scorpio is I, I like to think of it as being the groundwater. Like it's that water in the earth that we must tap to feed our cities, to get water to our cities. 
um, and you can't see it, it's down there in the dark, but at a, some level, it's a lot of groundwater is pure, it's being brought through rock and things like that. So it's a really great image to hold in your head is because I think the Scorpio definitely gets that, like that, ooh, creepy crawly, and sure, there's some of that to it, but, um, but that's also because our culture has rejects that which is dark and it's at our peril that we reject that because we all need to be able to walk through the night you know and uh i don't know so i think that that those are some of the things so i love how you said that bringing it to the surface um so should we share the chart yeah absolutely let's share the chart and while you're pulling that up what house is scorpio in in your chart jenny oh it's in the fifth house um and interestingly enough, this Scorpio new moon exactly is going to happen on my Scorpio moon. It's exactly. Oh, so yeah. this is a very, very powerful new moon for you on a personal level. Yes, this is one where I'm definitely going to be doing your ritual, Lori, of the candles and like planting the seed and thinking about what it is I need to transform in myself. And because I have it in the fifth house, it's all about my creative projects, writing, um, art, uh, expressing myself just like working on um well my my writing for astrology and other things um, isn't that funny because for me it, it falls in the third house so it's very much about writing for me oh yeah and that's i know you're doing some of that so yeah yeah so yeah. For, for those of you out there think about find that place of scorpio in your chart think about um what it might mean yeah um, yeah. yeah what's the seed you want to plant in yeah. that deep dark rich soil what do you need to pull up from the surface and plant the seed uh there's there's work to be done in this in this uh -huh. now for this new moon what do you see in this chart jenny this is very different than the the um lunar phase charts we've been talking about in the last few months isn't it it, it is because I think what catches my eye right away is that here's your um, new moon down here, 23 degrees Scorpio in the East Coast, the third house, and it's um, in a nice sextile with our, what we've affectionately <laughs> borrowed the term of COVID cluster, <laughs> um, but also the symbolism around transformation or of uh, structure, um, the expansion of that transformation, that's yeah. Jupiter's expansion. Yeah, uh, with the sextile um, being opportunity, possibility. Mm -hmm. What can yeah. we do different? What can be new? a new seed yeah. being planted at this time? Yeah. Um, it's sort of offered, yeah, it's like the seed that you plant now can really support the transformation that is happening in the culture. Mm -hmm. The thing I would, it's interesting, I always have this note of caution with sextiles because people go, oh, sextiles so great. Well, the thing is about sextiles is you, you have to take the opportunity. Right. So you, you, if you just sit on the couch, you just sit on the couch, you know, but if you go and you take, you take the opportunity and that's kind of, I think this poses an interesting question. Um, right now in the U.S., we're all sitting here waiting for election results to happen. Um, as you know, votes are being tallied and so on. So just, you know, again, I think depending on your perspective, you're going to have different viewpoints as to what that means. Um, but again, with a sex out, you've got to take the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think that is so important in sex tiles. I love sex tiles, but it is true. You really have to make the effort to have them amount to anything. Otherwise it's just, yeah, oh, oh, well. Yeah. Well, and then the other thing that kind of, then this brings a whole a different twist to it is then you also see that it, the sun and moon conjunction trines Neptune. Um, it's about, a, it's, it's five degrees, a little bit over five degrees that trine, but nonetheless valid. So that just, it's, I mean, with Neptune, it's kind of like you're talking about these states of consciousness and you can talk about it as delusion as you know lies and you know these things that are happening and the misuse of information on the other hand we can talk about transcendence and like elevating humanity and elevating our mindset and thinking more about compassion and care and consideration right. for others right um so it just depends i mean they're two sides of the same coin in a way um they both have a sort of a misty a little bit of a misty eye view um but and, and i think that my interpretation is we just see both of those things we yeah, see both ends of that spectrum there's a bit of lack of clarity here for sure 
um, things are not clear and yet the seed that's planted has the opportunity to really support the transformation, even though it's not clear. Yeah. I, I, think I, I like thinking about it that way. Yeah, we've got some lack of clarity. So plant your seed anyway and um, take action on the possibilities, the, the opportunities that are provided to help support the path forward. And with Neptune, you know, meditate a lot, pray a lot, listen to good music, read some poetry, yeah. go for a walk in the woods. You know, the, there is some good things um, available here. There's some goodness yeah. available here. It's not clear. You yeah. know, this COVID cluster is breaking up. It is, mm -hmm. it's, you know, we, we've got one more pass of um, the Jupiter-Pluto. Oh, that's done. By the time the new moon happens, we are on the other side of that final conjunction of Pluto and Jupiter. I think that happens on the 12th or the 14th. Yeah. So, oh, I like that. I didn't realize that. We are on the other side of that final conjunction of uh, Pluto and Jupiter, and Jupiter and Saturn are not going to come fully together until they're in Aquarius, I think after the first of the year. Mm -hmm. So this gathering, this COVID cluster, which is certainly not just around COVID, it's about it's, you know, reflects all the difficulties that the huge difficulties that we're in the middle of. But this is really, I think part of this opportunity is given because we're on our way out of this, this mm -hmm. mess. Which, yeah. Yeah. I would add to like, yeah, sorry. Did I go ahead? No, go ahead. Ask. Oh, I was just going to say when you were talking about with the Neptune, like the meditation and go for the walk in the woods. So I, I would add a yes. And I would add a bit of a, more of a, a shamanic twist to that, like bring a little more ritual into it. Um, even if it's like uh, almost like a little invocation before you set off on your walk and just hold in your mind, like what changes you want to, you know, do, how do you want to serve as a catalyst? What do you want to look at and just kind of make it a little bit more of a, um, a ritual um, but I love what you said about it. it's great, great. Well, that, advice. That's really good because it's sort of like the ritual yeah. is taking the action to make a space for that possibility and that mm -hmm. opportunity. Yeah. And I mean, think um, about like what, whatever your viewpoint is or, you know, your perspective, go within and think about what would you visualize as something that felt like a way to move forwards in an enlightened way in our society. What would that mean? How would we treat one another? How would we talk to one another? Okay. How, what kinds of things would you see unfolding and mm -hmm. think, and just hold that in, as part of that too. Cause I think it's really important to know what you think and what you value and getting square with that. Right. So. That's beautiful, Jenny. Thank you. I, you know, it's funny when I first looked at this chart, my initial was, oh, I didn't like that Neptune was trining that. <laughs> but as I see that with that trine, there's also that opportunity. It's like using those two together to help assist in this support of moving forward. Mercury's direct. Mars is direct. All of these planets are direct. I think the only retrograde we have left right now is Neptune. And then we're in a kind of a free sail period of time. I'm not sure exactly when Neptune goes direct, but I think it's this month. Mm -hmm. I think it's yeah, this it's month. Soon. I don't yeah. have the date at my fingertips, but. Um, so yeah, it's, um, but it is about, it's going to be turning direct pretty soon. And then all systems are go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, great. I mean, I, I think the final note I was going to add just about, Again, thinking about the moon making its journey and that um, before it met the sun, it passed over Venus and it passed over Mercury. So it's bringing over that message of balance and harmony as it went through its basalmic phase. So it's like basalmic and then Scorpio. So really is folding in those deeper elements. And then the Mercury, I just, the symbolism in this chart around communication is quite strong. This East Coast chart is just, again, about that communication. So yeah definitely oh so interesting so interesting well thank you jenny for having this conversation with me and um we'll be doing the full moon before you know it <laughs> all right, thanks Lori. all right thank you jenny we'll talk soon bye-bye bye everyone bye